God, what a year it has been! What happened this year? We didn't kill each other. We made it and we still love one another and that's rare for people that work together. So okay, I'm gonna let you go because I think in the last video I did all the talking. Started left my job December the twenty eighth, started at Sassy Jones January the seventh. Yeah, that sound right, because you want to take some time off. Yeah. That paid though for those couple of days I took off. It was like an early sign on bonus. From your old job or your new job? We new pay job. You pay me. How did I pay you? See, he I be doing sign, the, no, no, this is this. <laughs> he be doing the payroll and this is investment <laughs> because who gets paid and they didn't even start a job yet? It was like how hard it was for you to get acclimated and transition from coming from corporate, working into an unstructured ass small business. I will say at the beginning, I honestly felt like, oh, this is going to be easy. Because again, I was so <laughs> used to having structure. Mm -hmm. So, at the beginning, I will say it was, it was easy. Easy because I wasn't, I didn't know what I was doing. So, I was kind of just coming into the ropes. You were trying to train me. Mm -hmm. um, How'd that go? It went okay. And it was very much like, it was your way. No other way. What? For real? <laughs> what you mean? I don't know. But it's been an amazing year. I would say, honestly, training went well. Um, I learned a lot from the amazing staff. I learned a lot from you. Um, learned from my mistakes. Um, and I realized that I don't know how to do it. Thank you. Seriously, Thank you. I don't know how you did it. Many, many years doing it alone. And even to this day, it's really hard to still trust and give things away. Um, but I'm trying to let go. But I have to say, hiring you was the perfect, if you're gonna let go, you let go to you. If you're gonna let go, you let go to someone that you trust, that has your back, that's supportive, that's making all the decisions in your favor, you know, and also knowing that they're not trying to maliciously like sabotage you in any kind of way. There's such a peace associated with having him on along for the ride. So what would you say like the high of this year was for you? Toward the end of this year, the move. Oh, tell the people about the move <laughs> in the middle of the holiday season <laughs> after the cruise. <laughs> tell the people. I think that this year we, we've been able to, for the most part, um, recognize growth and recognize change quickly versus continually trying to adjust something that's not adjustable. Woo! Preach, Sasha Jones! Say it again! <laughs> <laughs> so I think the biggest thing is just recognizing things early on, shifting quickly, adjusting quickly, being comfortable with change. Um, and I had a deadline. My goal was to move within seven days. But well, why do we even have to move? What was this about? We got put out? So there was no elevator. We had, how many steps was it? About a hundred? Go every which way. <laughs> so anytime we get a, yeah, anytime we got a major shipment in, Typically, we created like an assembly line on the steps, up the steps. And when I say shipment, I'm talking about not... Like 200 boxes. Yeah, not like a little shipment. You get Sassy Jones box, you have some... <laughs> like pallets. Like we had to disassemble pallets in the parking lot. And the our fulfillment staff on the sidewalk. And our fulfillment staff had to take them up the steps multiple times a week. Mm -hmm. And so this does a number of things. It halts your productivity. It slows things down. It slows the, the employees down. But we thought coming into this that we could use the freight elevator because that was one of the bigger draws of the building. We were on the second floor. And the agreement was is that, hey, you can use this elevator whenever you need it. And it was a freight elevator. And after we signed the lease and we tried to use the elevator to move in, <laughs> we, click, we quickly realized that that was a farce and that our neighbors um, were sort of elevator police <laughs> whatever you want to call it yeah but i think that along with um once the shippers had their i guess you call it mail bin packed up they had to then take it downstairs into the mail bin because at that time the postal service didn't want to come upstairs either so it was just we were fighting the employees were fighting with delivery drivers oh. the pickup drivers we were fighting 
Um, it got to the point deliveries wouldn't even come because no one wanted to deliver to us. We became like the worst people on the map, Correct. like on the route from like the DHL hated us, FedEx Everybody. hated us. Everybody hated us because they would avoid us because it was so hard to deliver to us because they couldn't get use of this elevator. Correct. And so, so I think between that, the growth of the business, um, employees wanting um, walls and new offices um, took up a lot of the space as well. And so, <laughs> it just... Who wanted a wall? Who was, it? Who was that that wanted a wall? I they can't remember a... her name. You don't remember her name? Yeah, I, I know her name. You do? I know her I name. Know her yes, name. I do. She's sitting right here. So we had to put up some walls and um, then once the Christmas tree went up, at that point I realized <laughs> well, first of all, the Christmas no tree is like taller than the house. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, we had no more space to do anything. We were literally coming into office, walking through a maze. Yeah. And expecting more shipments. And, like, this is a busy time of year, but we had more, like, stuff coming with nowhere to put it. Yes. And so, at that point, I decided to look for a new place. Um, went on Craigslist, which is where we found all of our places, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, went on Craigslist, found a location that was a mile and a half down the street from us. Over two times the size of the space we had now. Um, half of it, not half of it, I would say a quarter of it was office, the rest of our house. And took you out, we did a tour of it. Um, none was available. Miraculously, we get a call, what, a week later, probably? And the one that someone was going to move in, they decided to go somewhere else, and we got the place. So I set a deadline for seven days. I had all. <laughs> Had all of um, all of my family, friends, everyone came to help. We started moving on Tuesday, got everything finalized on Sunday, and we're up in operation. It has been incredibly tough because I am used to being the queen and running the shots, right? And so when you have this dude coming over, it's the equivalent of you dating this guy. You already got kids, and he come over and tell you about your bad kids that's running around, and you want to like discipline your kids. <laughs> But you know your kids are bad. They're they're horrible. And he was like the guy that came in and like cleaned everything up. And so it got to a point in our growth where I knew I had the front, but I could no longer hold on to the back. You know, I just needed stronger strength in the back. So um, letting go of that ego and killing it and letting it die, um, surrendering, because I had mastered, um, I think we talked about this in the last video, surrendering mm -hmm. at home, but like at work, what? For what? I, I started this, you know? And so, and also learning to respect him in this role because I thought I was the expert in all things, but I didn't um, respect him enough to come and tell me what to do because he had not had experience in these, in entrepreneurship. So in, as well as like, I mean, you're a whole beast now, but in the beginning, like, you coming to tell me this? What? What is it? Like, you know, and then so once I heard enough, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong from him. And I was like, who are you to even tell me? You ain't never, you, ain't, you won't with me shooting in the gym. But he actually was with me shooting in the gym. He's been the only reason I can shoot in the gym. So, so um, the acclimation was tough in the beginning. And then I got over the acclimation. And then I think in the summertime, we were caught up. Oh, that's when... I mean, it was all the stuff happening in the summertime, like my personal brand, speaking engagements, Black Enterprise, Rachel Hall was like all this stuff. And then um, that's when like everything was work. There was no, like we're home right now, but there was no place to come home to because he even, he was home. And like, you know how you come home, you just throw off your shoes and it's just like, you know, you just let your hair down, throw your wig off. But there was nowhere to throw the wig because like this dude was full of Sassy Jones too. And he was talking Sassy Jones to me. And I was like, I don't want to talk about work. I don't want to be Sassy Jones all day. Call me Nicole. You know what I mean? And Nicole's my middle name. Only my family calls me Nicole. But like it, it would there was no escape from it. And then so that really started to like stress me out. I'm like, Lord Jesus, like what are we gonna do? Cause and then I think we came up with a cutoff. Like we do not talk about work after what time? That was when we tried it. No, but you don't even respect it. And see, this is what I'm talking about. But we don't do it no more. Yeah, we don't. We've mastered it now. Take about a year to get it right now. But in the summertime, we what you said. Mean mastered it? You I mean, it's. It's still implemented? Yeah, because remember the other night I told you, you was trying to talk about something. I was like, I don't want to talk about it. You did that because it was Sunday. This will eat you alive. And then the other thing, too, if this were easy, everybody would be doing it. 
everybody would be, would be doing it. There are people that have tried to do this and it swallows them up whole, you know? And so the beauty is that if we can master this, I mean like that's some strength there. And this ain't no little small mom and pop corner store business. You know what I mean? What was probably the biggest realization for you that, oh my God, cause you said when you started, you thought it was easy. What happened when you were like, you hit a wall, you was like, oh sh this isn't what I thought it was. At what point did you want to go back to Verizon? There wasn't a, there was not a point that I was well, well looking to turn around. Okay. However, what? I did. However, I think the biggest struggle for me is um, when you have people working for you. They're not just working for you, they're oh. counting on you. They expect certain things. Um, the responsibility level increases. It's a lot different than just having kids. It is a different level of responsibility because you're responsible to a degree for that person's life. Yeah, the people. And career. These people got mortgages and Correct. kids and stuff and, and you so, got to make money. <laughs> I think the... I think the biggest challenge out of that for me was getting the right talent, mm -hmm. losing what I would call great people, just not great fit, uh -huh. um, but being able to adjust quickly. Um, and by doing so, we've seen great success from it. What I've learned this year, which has been a, an amazing thing for me, is I'm not a risk taker. This year made me a risk taker. Woo! And so, That's a great life skill. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've learned more about, instead of focusing on what will happen when we started, just focusing on getting it started. You were the guy who would never take a risk just because of the fear associated with it and you didn't know what was gonna happen tomorrow. If you right. didn't if you couldn't plan out what was gonna happen tomorrow, you won't it. And ain't nothing. nothing I can do about it. Nothing. We were the couple like on vacation, I love to banana <laughs> boat and pear sale and all that stuff. And Keon is like, no, the court might drop out the sky and I'm not doing it. You know, and so I have to go do those things alone. But that's the yin and the yang, you understand? <sighs> Alright, so what was your biggest like, what are you so grateful about? I mean, do you find yourself settling more into entrepreneurship now? Or, or is there still some struggle? Because, like, managing your day can be a lot, you know? Like, I think for me, the biggest thing has been, I would say the second half of the year is removing expectations. Okay. Um, and focusing more on getting the task of the job done versus looking for who should do it, how it should be done, when it should be done, and owning as much as I can to get it done. Yeah, um, yeah. How do you think us working together has affected the kids? Jackson, do you <laughs> I think at the beginning it was a struggle because, like you said earlier, I didn't know when to cut it off. Yeah. In my mind, I'm always working. I don't know. I don't, get like, the, I don't submit a vacation day. I don't, you know, it's just I'm yeah, always working. No vacation, yeah. I'm dropping them off at school, just anything. Yeah, even and on so, vacation. Oh, you're yeah. working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think what I've learned, instead of trying to make it picture perfect, yeah. is to include the kids on what we do. Include yeah. them on the journey. Let them see where we work. Let them understand. So when they ask that question, like, where's mommy going? Is she going to the sparkle party? They understand what sparkle they party totally is. They totally know what and, sparkle yeah. party is. So in between that and traveling a lot, it's like we do so much sheltering. I think this year we've done a lot of including them. Yeah. So they understand what's going on. They understand, you know, where we work, what we do, mm -hmm. um, what day you do sparkle. They understand all of it. Mm -hmm. It's really important to me to include them too. Yeah. And for it to become their lifestyle and their new normal, I want them very much to be the kid who sees their parents going for it and grinding and not waiting to um, for someone to give them a handout or waiting on raises or waiting on, you know, they see their parents going to go get it. Yep. And so what's also really important to me is that they have freedom of choice. If they don't want to inherit Texas Jones Child, that's fine, but they know what entrepreneurship looks like. It's a whole different skill, a whole different muscle. Um, so I'm proud. At first I dealt with a lot of mommy guilt associated with like working, and I actually still do, but not as much as I used to. What would you mean? No, like I think you do a good job. I think you make yourself feel guilty. I don't think uh -huh. there's nothing to be guilty about. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing with Because you definitely don't put that on me. No. And neither do the kids. No. They're like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think... are so used to it. Yeah. I think um, it's not changing the kids' experience. So it's making sure that I can step up and do exactly what you can do if you're not present. Because you are totally 100%. Correct. Yeah. And you so can do all the things. The biggest thing for us... Even when we first met and before we decided to have kids was to 
learn how to do it all. Mm -hmm. So we're not necessarily, if one is gone, something is missing. Yeah. So kids still get the same experience, in yeah. my opinion. And I love that. Keeping their lives as normal as possible. Yeah. I think I made the absolute best decision and you made the absolute best decision to work together. That has been the game changer in this brand. And we have accelerated so rapidly being this quote unquote power couple. But you see the outer and it's really important for me to, for you to know like what goes on at home, what goes on underneath it. Because, um, you know, in case you decide to do this, you know everything <laughs> there is to know about it. Anything else you want to say to the people? I'll let y'all know how second year. Uh, 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 this is the first year. Uh, 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 uh. You, first are you been... saying? Cause I fire you. I'll fire you today. <laughs> so are you? Are you saying? Or are you? Or are you going? I got Tell one more. One more day in 2019. <laughs> then I'll let you. Know. Oh my gosh, you love it here. I'll let y'all know this time. <laughs> <laughs> I did so wrong. <laughs> that is so wrong. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Sassy Jones TV. Until next time. Bye.